A moment ago we talked about the 20% of repurposing other people's content, and that's a viable strategy up to a point. Let's talk about the 80%, which is your own content. And here's an example of what I would mean. I'm still looking at my at other people's stuff, but look at what I see here. Five tips for social media savvy stylists. That's the picture itself, but it doesn't list any of those five tips. Like this over here, which I can clearly see has a lot. They're, they're, you know, they're, what's the expression when you give away the cow instead of the milk? Right here, they're giving away the whole cow. Everything is here. Right here, they're giving away the milk. They still have the cow on their website. So this is a teaser to take you back to babethings.com. So that's a, that's a way that you can decide. You can do either of these ways. You can do one way one time and one way another time. It's up to you. So you can give it all away in your picture itself, or you can have a teaser to take you back to your website where you're actually going to have them buy your product. So we'll see now that if I upload my own work, well, I want to link back to my website. And Pinterest is very good about giving attribution. We saw that we can rewrite someone's comment here very easily, but it's still going to have built in where did it come from, and that we cannot change. So this particular pin, it says it's found on babethings.com. You cannot edit that. No one can edit that. It came from somewhere, and this will always lead people back to it. If I were to repin this, I can completely remove this. Need some ideas on how to stay more connected? We'll just cut that all out and put my own thing. I can do that, but I cannot remove where it came from, and that's very good and very powerful. So I can share my stuff from my own website, and it'll always have a link back to my website. That's attribution. On Twitter, you might not get that automatically. Someone could copy your picture from your site and put it on their Twitter, and it doesn't need to have any link back to your site. I mean, it doesn't have an, a link automatically back to your site. Pinterest, because the pin it button, the way it's programmed, it will take the original link and attach it to your image by default. So that's what I want to do now. I want to add my own content with a link back to my website. So do you see on the bottom right corner you have a little plus sign? You always have this plus. Put the plus. And the first time, it'll probably pop up to tell you, save creative ideas from around the web with one click. There it is bothering us again about that pin button. I'm going to say not now again, but it's going to keep asking me. Let's say not now, and then you're going to need to click the plus one more time. Okay, now that you click the plus, it says, would you like to upload a pin like from your own digital camera? Or would you like to get a pin from your website? Either way will work, but let's say pin from a website. So click the second one, pin from a website. So okay, what's your website address? So the, that little button that it keeps telling me, get this button, it might be a little faster because if I'm on my website, pmdinteractive.com, and I want to share one of my blog posts, and I've got the pin it button directly here. It'll go quickly to Pinterest. What we're doing right here requires a little bit of an extra step. It requires you to, to copy and paste the address of your, of your website or your, your, your content. Let's say I want to share from my blog post, from my website, the blog post the blog checklists, part three of three. Let's say I didn't have that pin button. I would copy the link and I would paste it here. Next. And what Pinterest will do is it will analyze that page, find a picture. It found this picture. And when I pick it, it'll say, okay, great. What description do you want? What pin do you want to, what pin board do you want to put it in? and it will automatically have the link back to my website. So we can't just type it in? Type. We, we, can't, we can't just put it in, you have to copy it and paste it? 
if you know your address, type it in, yes. Oh. But I don't know my address to this particular post. Oh. I know PMD Interactive, but I don't remember slash 2015 slash 09 slash 22 slash the dash blog blah 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 blah. So yeah, if you know your address, definitely just type it in. But usually you want to copy it so you don't misspell it. So I created a board and I pinned it. Called useful stuff. So if I had followers, they would see that pin. They would have the ability to pin it, comment, and such. They would see automatically pinned from PMD Interactive. And that is not edit editable. They could click on it, add a comment. They could share it and add their own text, but it's still going to bring along the link back to my website. And that's very powerful. So yes, that pin it from website is powerful but it requires that you add an address. Now, if you simply add your, your main address, that's not as effective. pmdinteractive.com. This is only going to look... It doesn't go deeper than the address that you feed it. it this is looking on our home page. And it's finding these graphics, but it's not getting deeper into the other blog posts or into the products. It just sees what's on this page that you added to the address. So if I wanted to pin this one, well, it's just that picture. It's not pointing to the page about about uh, hire us as a web designer. This pin it button. Let's say this one. I want to pin this click pin it and then it pops up in a different way. Okay, you're about to share that that photo and look it already took a little text for me built into the picture and I can then put it into the the board. That pin it button might be more useful for you to use. That requires on your website to activate that ability. We, we're not going to get a chance to do it here together because I've got this website, it's made in WordPress, and then there is, a, there is a button that I have to turn on in the WordPress settings that lets the Pinterest feature work. So your website might have the same thing. Turn on social media, for example. If it doesn't, there's other ways to do it, like Pinterest will say, okay, copy this code from Pinterest and paste it onto your site, and then it'll work. It's really going to depend on what your, how your site is built, what software built your site. If you use something like uh, Dreamweaver, it would be a different procedure to get the Pinterest button to work than if you did it with WordPress, then with Joomla, then with Squarespace and Wix and whatever. But that might be the fastest way to get your stuff on Pinterest. The pin, the pin it button is going to go much quicker to your site instead of what you saw me do a moment ago. I have to copy and paste and then I have to and then I have to go through that th through those hoops I can also upload a pin. This one's a little more involved also. So if I select upload a pin, it says choose your image. So that, is, that assumes I have an image to upload. I have a few sample ones here just to show you. If I go to pictures and sample, let's say I'm going to upload this jellyfish image. 
so I can upload that picture. But this one, the problem here is it has no attribution. It has no, no origin. Where did this picture come from? So here I have to make sure that I added an address. address and then that will have a link back to my website Let's say you've uploaded some, some pins and you didn't add the address. You can add it in another way like this. You've got a pin, you've got on, on your own pins, you also get, instead of a favorite, you get the option to edit. So on other people's pins, you get the favorite. On your own pins, you get edit. So let's say you misspelled something. You can click edit. You can go back to edit the description. If you didn't add a link on your description, you can also add it on the website. And that will be like what we saw <coughs> a moment ago that it'll say pinned from, and where did it come from? And that is not editable by, by people. Just you as the originator of the picture. You can um, you can put anything that's useful in that description. Definitely, like you can explain what it is. Mm -hmm. You can explain where to buy it, mm -hmm. or or how to how to use it. Mm -hmm. So anything you want to add in that in that in that description will be useful because then when people search, the words that you use there could help you get found. Mm -hmm. And then what's also very useful is to have that link that website so that people can go back to the website to to buy or whatever it is you're trying to do on the website so it's going to keep reminding me here get your browser button to save ideas faster I'm going to be mixing then 20% of other people's content and 80% my own content. And the more you add your own content to Pinterest, the easier it'll be that, that other people will, will find it. Let's see, there's a screen somewhere. I always have a bit of a hard time finding it, but... Oh, here, here, here it is. Uh, whenever your content gets pinned on Pinterest, Pinterest keeps track of everything. 
So it'll say more from indieinteractive.com. So if you are uploading your own pins, or you're adding pins from your website, Pinterest is going to keep track of that. So if someone saw this, they might then see, well, what's that one? And maybe I didn't post it myself like this one. Giver World posted that. Sunglassable posted that. Teresa Bill, Teresa Bills posted that. Other people posted or reposted, repinned this these pins. And so I'm building a presence on Pinterest. And popularity breeds popularity. So as I post my content here and it's suggested to other people, those other people might further like that, comment on it, repin it, and I get more followers in the long term. Oh, I, I closed it without thinking, but it popped up to say, get Pinterest on your phone. So you've got an app also. You've got the Pinterest app for Android and, and iPhone and Windows phones. So get the app also. And you've got this camera. If you've got a smartphone, you've got this camera where on the spot you can take photos of your products and right away share them on, on Pinterest. You have the full features on the app that you have on the website, the ability to add photos and text and links and you've got the photos easier to do because it's right on the phone and it's on the go and you can attach I believe you can attach the location and uh, so the more you do it the more potential audience you can get the more content you're putting on Pinterest the more it can be found and it's just a matter of, of using it, of being active on social media. See what other people are doing. Like, this is inspiring me right here. Before and after. So, not the best photo. Flash is always harsh on a photo, especially on people. But here, and then there's a messy background, like, I don't want to see their house. And so here I see the ingredients before relatively nicely put together harsh flash but it's a good photo and then after so how can I do that with Victor's Bakery same thing have a table full here of all the ingredients the flour and everything take that photo bake the donuts or, or you know fry the donuts and then have a plate of them afterward take another photo there's before and after that's cool that can work for just about everything maybe I'm a novelist I can use Pinterest also to promote my book so I can have my book here with empty pages. And then the after is, then I've got words written on the page. So look at what other people are doing and see what I can do, because they're not all going to be professional. These photos right here are very professional. Very good lighting and framing and composition. And look at that blur and everything. Professional photo. And look at this one. It's got this text in the middle with a graphic and very well shot. This one down here, I can tell it's not professional, but it's eye-catching, and I'm going to give it a favorite. And you're going to get the same thing. You don't always have to have the professional content. The point is you have to have content. You don't want to be very, very unprofessional, though. If it really was a really ugly photo with, you know, kids' toys in the background and uh, stains on the countertop, maybe that won't entice me much. And notice they've got their, their website on their picture themselves there. That required graphic software to write the name. You can use Microsoft Paint or uh, Photoshop or other such photo editing software um, to embed your, your, your website onto the pictures. It, for fear of it being removed on the description, you can embed it right onto your pictures. If, ever, if, if you don't have 
Paint or Photoshop. Let me show you here this free website where you can easily add text to your pictures or crop them or filter them or just edit them basically. This is called pixlr.com, pixlr.com. There's no vowel there. pixlr.com. pixlr.com. You have the editor and the express. The editor is the is the one that gives you the more powerful tools like Photoshop. But the Express is the one where you can quickly add text, borders, effects. I can do some edits, some basic edits, and then I can uh, save, and this will download. And so, any any software to edit your images, and I'm just showing you Pixlr because it's a it's a quick one. And here I'm going to upload my photo with my text on it. That way I can be sure that it, someone doesn't repurpose it too much. So Pinterest is similar then to all the networks where you have those different actions like uh, share, comment, follow. The big differences are you've got these pin boards. It's all about graphics and you're putting them into boards. Make as many boards as you want, as many as you think that your users might like. Add pins on a regular basis. This is one of the networks that I would definitely say though, you do it a lot, um, like every day. Put, put one thing every day. So you can scrounge up seven pictures maybe, or you know, five repurposed pictures and two original ones, but every every day try to put something. Because you're gonna have content that will entice people to follow you. You then you're also going to go in and take some time, two minutes. Go in and, and put your timer, your stopwatch for two minutes and go in and start adding favorites to things that relate to what your business is about. Some of them will will eventually follow you back, some will ignore you, maybe take five minutes to comment. That might be more powerful than a simple like because those are so transitory. But if you go in and start to reply, you click and you go comment, take five minutes and comment on people's, on people's pins, maybe ask a question that could get you more results, more more follows. We'll do that during the break because that was the whole process of going into Pixlr. And so you want to be active. You want to be social on social media. You want to do it regularly. This, this one I would say do it often. 
and whenever you add your own content somewhere there make sure that it has a link back to your website you don't want your 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 pins to be orphaned where did they come from where where where, where were their parents so whenever you pin from a website that's the one that's going to guarantee a link back to your website whenever you upload a pin you have to make sure that you've manually added a link either in the description or the way I kind of prefer it a little bit more is and it takes also a few more steps after you've uploaded the photo then you edit the photo and add the website because if you only add it into the description didn't we see a moment ago that people can edit the description to whatever they want so they could remove your address from the description but if you add it to the website field no one can change that only yourself and you can also delete the pin the problem though is that if if you shared something on Pinterest and someone else reshared it and you delete it this does not delete every copy of it on Pinterest it only deletes your copy of it so whatever you share on Pinterest you want to make sure you want people to see and to reshare and to live outside of your control because if you delete a pin and someone else had a copy of it you cannot delete their copy So I think uh, we'll end the main lecture at this point, have some lab time to digest this and maybe to do it, ask questions and such. Today is our last day of part one. We'll start parts two next Wednesday and we'll go through the whole enrollment process on the college's website and catalog. It should say what we'll be covering and I've been mentioning it a few times, but for part two, LinkedIn, Instagram, Yelp, and YouTube. That's what I want to cover. LinkedIn, because it's very useful as a professional network and it has its own nuances. Instagram, because it's very popular. It actually has surpassed the number of users that Twitter has. Twitter has 320 million or so, 315 million users. Instagram just got to uh, 400 million. 400, I think. Maybe 500, but 400, let's say. So it's got more than Twitter. It's got more users than Twitter. Does it mean it's better or worse? I don't know. It depends on your business and its needs because Pinterest also relies a lot on graphics. You might say, well, I already have Pinterest. Why do I need Instagram? Now, that's a good question. You might not need both. You might not need either. That's why we're doing a survey of this class. One day per week we talk about one network, then you can decide if it's for you or not. The thing about Pinterest or, or Instagram, when we get to it, when we come next time, you can only use in Instagram on an app. You can only use Instagram on a mobile device. There is no Instagram website for you to upload. It has to be on an iPhone or an Android or an iPad or a Nexus tablet or whatever. It has to be a device. We can like people's com uh, photos and comment and stuff on the website, but we cannot upload except through the app. So if you don't have... What's that? Yes, bring your, bring your device. Bring your device to actually use it. And then we'll, uh, it's, we're not going to talk about it in this order. Well, I think we will. I think we'll talk about Instagram second and, pin, and LinkedIn first because LinkedIn is going to be on the website, number one. And so if I were to then suddenly spring it on everyone, okay, everyone, let's use Instagram. Take out your device. Oops, I didn't bring it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use, in, I'm going to do Instagram on the second day and tell everyone, bring your devices on the first day. And I think we're going to do, I'm deciding which to do first, Yelp or YouTube. Uh, but y we can all do, do those on the website. And then I'll actually, I'll probably do Yelp last and actually take a survey of the class. Do you even want to talk about Yelp or do you want to talk about something else? 
because for some people Yelp might be great and for some it'll be a waste of time. We'll get to it later, but definitely LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We'll see about Yelp. Just to kind of get a little preview right now, if I ask this group here, how many of you would like me to include Yelp in the class? Raise your hand. Four, five. How many of you would, would not care about learning Yelp in this class? Okay. So, well, I'll ask when we get the full class. But we'll see how it goes. That'll be next time. And so that's the end of part one for the moment, and when we come back next time, it'll be part two.